Do you think that Luka Doncic is actually holding the Mavericks back as a whole in this series against the Suns? Before before you even put the camera on me, put it back on us because I want I want I want to, I want everybody to see your reactions too. In your lifetime, <clears throat> we've lived through Kobe, we've lived through Braun, we've lived through KD, Kyrie, all these mega stars that love taking all these crazy shots. In what world do those superstars shoot as inefficiently as Luka Doncic has been the last couple of games and keep shooting? Kobe. Kobe would. But the Lakers find ways to win games. The Lakers had teammates around them. I'm just talking about straight superstars. The angle I'm getting at is Luka Doncic is a generational player. Luka Doncic is a top three, top five NBA player depending on who you ask. The Mavericks are as successful recently because Luka Doncic has been able to carry them through. Despite the first two games that he missed in the Utah series, we were still able to split that. Um, or the first three games, excuse me. Uh, we were able to uh, go up 2-1. <clears throat> excuse me. Now, of course, now as I'm going to speak, now my throat wants to start acting up. Luka Doncic last night, there were several instances where he pulled with... 19, 18 seconds on the shot clock. Not moving the ball. Isolation basketball. Got a mismatch on Aiton. Got a mismatch on McGee or Biombo, And he decided to pull. Luka was 2 of 8 from the three-point line. Luka is 2 of, I believe, 18 or 4 of 18 from the three-point line in the last two games. Luka Doncic scored 28 points last night, but he took 23 shots. Jalen Brunson, 9 of 17. He had 21 points. The both of them had four turnovers a pop. The Mavericks as a whole just stopped attacking the basket. They got too reliant on shooting the three ball because after game four, we thought, hey, we can do this all game. We can do this every week. We can do this every fucking se- every series. No, we went eight of 32 from the three-point line. We shot 25%. From the free throw line, we shot 66%. From the field, we shot 38 fucking percent. Guys, do you realize how embarrassing that is? Do you have any idea how watching this game made me lose brain cells? Can we fucking get it together and act like the basketball team we are at home? Can we figure out that maybe when we get Aiton, McGee, and and Biombo in foul trouble, we can continue to attack the paint and live off of the free throw line? They're going to start collapsing on the paint, and you're going to kick it out to shooters. We're not going to do these isolation at the top of the key, get a mismatch and keep pulling. We're not going to keep doing this isolation, pull off off the elbow. We're not going to keep doing this, swing the ball around until someone's open in the corner. No, we need to run set plays. We need to attack the basket, get to the free throw line and create for other people. But when Luca's on the floor, it's like no holds barred. It's just, fuck it. Give me the ball. I'm going to just put it up there. Our bigs, absolutely atrocious. Maxi Klebe was out here basically playing with one eye, black eye. I'm completely being exaggerative just for my girlfriend purposes because she loves him. That's her favorite player on the team. Um, obviously, Dwight Powell's a complete liability. Boban's not going to get any burn because he's completely useless. And even when you put in Marcus Chris, he's out here trying to fight somebody at the end of the game. Granted, I justify what he did because what Biombo did trying to dunk the ball up 30 with literally like a second to go is trash. And how it escalated was neither here nor there, but still. Um, Spencer Dinwiddie not performing three points last night, 16 minutes. You didn't make a basket. All your shots came from the free throw line. What, what are we doing? Explain to me how we lose by 30 after just dominating Phoenix the last two games. Explain to me why we stopped attacking the basket and got so shot heavy. Explain to me why Luka Doncic starts the game off, I believe, about like, I want to say four of six, four of seven. Good start. I think 11 or 12 first quarter points. And after that, he just thought, I'm going to just go for 50 tonight. Fuck it. Even if I'm not making it. 10 of 23. If I've always, and I, that, this could be because I'm old fashioned, but if your shot ain't falling, you got to get other people involved. We know that Luka Doncic is a triple double machine. But Dorian Finney-Smith was two of three from the three-point line to start the game. Do you know what he ended with? Eight points. After he missed that third three, he barely touched the basketball again in the, in the first half. Reggie Bullock had zero points. One of our most consistent three-ball shooters this series. Dwight Powell 
zero points. Maxi Kleba, four points. Our three and D shooters had a total of 12 points because we got so shot heavy. I'm not going to keep dwelling on it because I'm just getting more and more upset. But Kyle and I have talked about this all season long, all post series long. When Luca is on the court, sometimes he is more of a hindrance than a blessing because he gets too shot heavy and he thinks that he's got to consistently have these heat check moments and the offense is stagnant. It is Luca by himself with whoever's in front of him. They might get a pick to get a switch and then that's it. That ball's going up. He has been able to dominate and score at a high and efficient clip because he's not necessarily someone that can be guarded by anybody that's on Phoenix's roster. But efficiency-wise, like we talked about with Drew Holiday, it's not always the greatest. I think the other night he was 9 of 25. 10 of 23, is, is that really much better? I can't give him passes because he's Luka Doncic. I can't give him excuses or make excuses for him because he's our best player. If you're our best player and you're getting that double team or your shot's not falling, you got to get everybody else involved. You got to stop driving to the basket, kicking it out. There were a couple of instances where he's already in the paint and he all he has to do is just jump low floater. Instead, he's passing it back out to someone that's already covered. If you're in the paint, take the shot. Don't take the shot 25 feet from the basket because you think that you can make every step back shot that you've ever taken in your life. So I've had about enough. Truthfully and honestly, I think the series ends tomorrow night in, in Dallas. I think that Dallas is going to continue to try to shoot themselves out of the slump. Granted, it, we're at home, so if we win, I'm not going to be surprised. But it's just prolonging us getting ass whooped in Phoenix again because we just don't know how to play on the road. Luke is a great player. He's a phenomenal player to watch. I've seen him live multiple times. He puts on a show every time. But he just gets too full of himself in too many situations to where it, it, it infuriates me to watch. And my girlfriend's father, shout out to my girl's pops, he doesn't necessarily watch basketball. He watched the majority of that game with me at his house yesterday. And even he was confused as to what the hell Luca was doing. He's not even a Mavericks fan. He's a Sixers fan. And we'll get into that game in a minute. But... When a neutral party that doesn't even watch your games is just as confused as the person that watches almost every game, if not every postseason game, there's got to be a fucking problem here. I'm not saying bench Luka. I'm not saying take shots away from Luka. But you got to pick your poison and you got to know when a shot is good and, you know, when it takes some. Situational awareness. It's applicable in all sports. I just think Luka needs to chill, bro. And if he doesn't, we about to get smoked off our own home floor. Well, and this is one of the things that you and I were talking about, um, not well, when we were recording. We talked about this the other day. And the one thing that has always kind of concerned me about Luca's game is that when he's on the court, there's no ball movement whatsoever when he's actually the ball handling player. Everybody will space the floor. Everybody will kind of go to their respective spots and they'll just kind of let Luca work his magic. He'll dribble. He'll have a couple crossover moves try to get some space and then try to get a step back three or a step back jumper and then th that's it that's the possession or it's either that or he'll pass it to somebody they'll just kind of pass it around the three-point line and, and just hope for a three-point shot to get knocked down and the way that they see the offense being run it's just stagnant and to me this is where jason kidd has to make an adjustment he has to make the adjustment when it comes to how the ball is distributed when Luca is the ball handling player on the offensive side of the ball because the way that this offense runs when Luca's running the show, it's inefficient and they're relying too much on Luca to actually carry the Mavs moving forward. And Kev, we've even talked about this when it comes to um, Jalen Brunson uh, being the ball handling player on the offensive side of the ball. When Jalen is on the offensive side of the ball, it just seems like the ball movement with whoever's on the court with him is just more fluid, it's more efficient, and honestly, I think Dallas gets better shot looks, or just gets better opportunities to knock down shots when Jalen's running the show. I can't really say that with Luka. Granted, Luka will go out there and score 25, 30, sometimes he'll even put up a 40 piece, but it really kind of comes down to at what cost. He might put up 25, 30 shots. He'll knock down 14 or 15 of them, but there are just some possessions you're going to look at. It's like, He's doing way too much. He's doing more to actually hurt the Mavs than actually try to help them. And this is kind of one of the things that I think Luca is learning on the fly. Because 
I think the one thing that when we look at Luka Doncic, Luka's relatively young. He's under 25 years old. He's only been in the league for a couple of years. And this series has really shown me when Dallas is not hitting their shots, they are getting smoked. Because in all of their road games, where they've gone cold as a unit, and specifically Luka has gone cold, they get destroyed. I mean, in Game 5, in that third quarter, granted, in Game 5, they were down three points at halftime. They gave up 33 points to Phoenix in the third quarter alone. Dow scored 14 points. 14. It was a 19-point differential between both teams. And essentially, the game's over. You went from a three-point deficit to a 22-point deficit in the third quarter. You're not going to win basketball games like that. And the one thing that the Mavericks haven't been able to do is to be a good second-half team on the road. Because when you look back at some of these road games in Phoenix, from, from Dallas's perspective, they're in it in the first half. Now, maybe there was, I think game one was the only game where they actually kind of struggled in the, in the first half. But by and large, in the second half of these games on the road in Phoenix, they have struggled mightily. And when Phoenix goes on a run, Dallas tries to match it when it comes to just going shot for shot against Phoenix, except Dallas isn't knocking down their shots and Phoenix is just getting ample opportunities to knock down shots, whether it's Devin Booker, Chris Paul, DeAndre Ayton, and the list goes on. So, you know, when it comes to the Mavs going into game six, Luka has to be better at ball distribution. Not everything could go through him when he's the ball handling player on the offensive side for them. He has to get Spencer Dinwiddie involved. Spencer's been basically absent this entire series. Uh, Davis Bertans, he's got to get better looks. Um, Dorian Finney-Smith, uh, Reggie Bullock. I mean, these are guys, when given ample opportunities to knock down shots, they can do it. They proved that against the Jazz in the first round of the playoffs. In this series, it's been very spotty. Granted, they were fine uh, in games three and four when they were at home. But they have to show me that they could actually win a road game against Phoenix. And up until this point, based on really their second half performances on the road, I have no reason to believe that they're going to win any of these road opportunities anytime soon in the playoffs just because they're just not built for it yet. Granted, they're still a relatively young team. Luka is still kind of learning things on the fly when it comes to playoff basketball. And this just may be one of those experiences and one of those situations where Luka's going to learn some hard lessons from this series. And granted, when it comes to game six, I still think that Dallas has a shot to win this game. I picked the Suns to win in six. That's kind of how I've seen this series uh, play out. That was my original prediction. And up until this point, everything that I've predicted actually happened. Dallas won both of their home games after Phoenix won their first two. I thought that Phoenix would win uh, game five at home. But, you know, when it comes to game six, my original prediction was that Phoenix would close this out in six. And if if the Mavs play anything like they did on the road in game five, going into game six, you can pretty much chalk this up as a dub for Phoenix. And Phoenix would go on to the Western Conference Finals. I mean, this is a huge game for both teams. It's do or die for the Mavs. Luka's got to be better because you can make a very legitimate point that he's actually holding the Mavericks back to a certain extent with how he's playing on the offensive side of the ball. And if that's not corrected, um, Dallas is going to be out of the playoffs. That's just how I see it.